5 Things You Missed in Don't Look Up Don't Look Up is a satirical comedy film about an apocalyptic scenario that threatens the existence of the human race. Director Adam McKay made the film to draw a comparison to the impending climate crisis and to draw attention to it. Seeing as there is little to no media coverage about a potentially disastrous sequence of events that may result in the extinction of all life on Earth. In the film, a planet killer asteroid, much like the one that led to the extinction of dinosaurs, is on a direct collision course with Earth. The asteroid is discovered by one of the leads of the film, Kate Dibiaski, a Michigan State University doctoral candidate. Her professor, Dr. Randall Mindy, while calculating the asteroid's course, comes to a horrible realization that sets the premise for the rest of the film. The asteroid will hit Earth in approximately six months and is large enough to cause an extinction-level event. Here are some things you might have missed during your viewing of this crazy science comedy political film. Number 1. Director Adam McKay was not going to make the film at one point. While discussing his initial ideas for the film, Adam shared that his original script of the movie took a much more dramatic approach to the premise. However, he wrote the script before the COVID-19 pandemic happened, and what transpired in those few months where it felt like the world was on fire and we were all going to die not exactly his words, but you get the gist, right? Changed his creative process by a lot. At one point, he did not want to go through with the film because the film was already happening. Ultimately, he decided to make everything in the script 15% crazier to keep up with what had happened in the meanwhile, making it a perfect fit for a post-pandemic watch. Number 2. The film's characters are influenced by real-life people Upon learning the dreadful nature of the asteroid, our leads Kate and Randall immediately board on a flight to Washington in order to secure an audience with the president to inform her of the coming danger and to ask her for immediate precautions. The president, who is very loud about her anti-intellectual and anti-scientific ignorance, decides to pay them no heed. There is no doubt that the director took direct reference for her character from a similarly proudly ignorant orange-hued president that ran the office until recently. Similarly, the scientist Isherwell, who might as well have the orchestrator of chaos plaque stamped to his forehead, can be seen embodying the spirit of a number of tech tycoons that threaten the planet with their never-ending greed. Singer Ariana Grande ends up playing a caricatured version of herself in the film as well. This leads to a bit in the movie where the hosts in the morning show are more concerned about her recent breakup than her new album. This only drives home the point that morning shows are nothing but mindless banter focused on keeping the attention of lowest common denominator. Don't worry though, the fact that you're here watching this video proves you are not one for poorly done entertainment. Number 3. There are actual protocols in place to counter the threat of asteroid collision Although the idea that an asteroid collision may bring about the end of the human race may seem far-fetched, there are actual protocols in place to combat the threat if it may arise. The United States has an initiative which goes by the acronym NEO ITP IWG, an assemblage of smaller daughter organizations that are charged with mapping and observing the paths of potential planet killing asteroids. So, if you were wondering if we would simply die in our sleep in case an asteroid struck the Earth, or if there were people keeping tabs on that sort of thing, rest assured, the Weird Acronym Initiative has us covered. However, successfully dealing with the aforementioned planet-killing asteroids is a different story altogether. Seeing as humanity has not ever in its history dealt with one before, so we may still die due to one. <laughs> Oops. Number 4. The title of the film is incredibly nuanced. The film starts with both our leads failing to convincingly break the news of mankind's extinction to the public. When the matter is eventually recognized as being of utmost importance, a safer alternative to get rid of the asteroid is sidelined with one that is unsafe and would return a greater profit. This leads to the whole don't look up and just look up campaigns, as one party takes the side of rationality and other the side of ignorance and stupidity. However, during the last few moments of the film, a switch occurs once again. Now the ones who disregarded the threat are looking up in disbelief and regretting their decisions, whereas the ones that spearheaded the just look up movement are looking down amongst family and friends, embracing the inevitable end. Number 5. There are multiple Easter eggs in the movie that foreshadow the incoming end. Seeing as the film was made made with the directorial intention of bringing attention to the threat of climate change, a disruption of the environment that can have disastrous and irreversible effects on the Earth. There are a few Easter eggs scattered throughout the movie that foreshadow the incoming end in the movie as well as in real life. As Kate Dibiaski and Dr. Randall scratch their heads to come up with effective ways to inform the public of the literal, life-threatening situation they have come face to face with, a dinosaur can be seen distributing flyers on the street in the peripheral. Another visual that foreshadows extinction is the polar bear holding an umbrella erected in the supermarket, where Kate eventually finds herself working at. Did you catch any other extinction easter eggs that we might have missed? Go ahead and share!